Hey guys, a very quick one today. I saw somebody asking online how you can make a, a flag or something move around in the wind. So I'm going to use Suzanne as an example. We're going to create this animation. It's going to be really straightforward. And if you want super fast cycles renders, then check out Turbo Tools version 3, which is available from 3d-illusions.co.uk. So let's start from scratch and we'll give Suzanne the material. Let's just change it over to Eevee in the render section. So change that to Eevee. Click on Suzanne, say new material if you're in the shader editor, go to rendered view. Uh, if you've not got a HDRI set up, then just go into the shader editor under the world tab, and then you can just set up these nodes. So this one is a shift A S environment texture, and then you just choose your HDRI, which you can get from a place like HDRI Haven, for example. And then you just plug in the mapping node and the texture coordinate set to generated. And then you can, of course, rotate the environment by rotating this Z rotation. So with that done, we'll go back to the object mode of the shader editor and we'll give it a red material, make it a bit glossy. So we'll turn on, turn down the roughness to zero. We can't really see much at the moment. So we'll press control one to give it one subdivision. I'm going to right click and choose shade smooth. We'll go across to the modifier and you can see in there, let's get rid of this geometry node. We don't need that. We've got one subdivision in the modifier stack. One thing to bear in mind as well, if you are going to render this, then make sure you set the render subdivisions to the same as the viewport. Otherwise, you're going to get strange results when you do render it. Now, what I also want to do is add a vortex. So shift A, we go to a force field, uh, not a vortex, sorry, we'll add a wind. So we've got the wind in there. And if we go to the properties of the wind under the physics section here, this physics tab, we can change the strength of that wind as well. So maybe turn that up to something like uh, 20. And we can see that has been indicated in the viewport as well. Next thing, we'll select the monkey and we want to go into the physics tab and just turn on cloth simulation. And if we play this back now, it's going to drop down to the floor and we can't really tell there's a cloth simulation on it. What we actually need to do is get it to stay in place. And to do that, what we've got to do is go into edit mode under the data tab We'll add a new vertex group and we'll call this pin. So this, it doesn't matter what you call it. We'll select a couple of vertices. I'm going to select the top three here, maybe the front one as well. And we'll say assign. So these three vertices or these four vertices that I've just selected have been assigned to this pin group with a weight of one. So we'll come back out of edit mode. We'll go back into the physics tab. And if we go down to the shape section, we can choose to pin certain vertices, which basically means that they're not going to move. So we'll click on this and we'll choose the vertex group we just made that we call pin. And now if we play this back, those vertices you'll see are staying pinned in place and the rest has been affected by the simulation. And of course we can rotate this wind around to get different effects and we can make it Let's just move this wind this way. Probably turn up the strength a little bit on that wind impact. Let's change it up to something like 300. You can see we're just slightly leaning to the right now. So let's go a little bit more. There we are. So we've got quite a strong wind now pushing that across. Let's go back to the beginning. And there we are. And if we want to get this a bit smoother now, we can go into the monkey and we'll go into the modifier tab and we'll just add another subdivision modifier after the cloth so you can see that I smoothed it out and if we play this back we're going to get a much nicer result be careful not to put too many subdivisions before the cloth modifier otherwise the cloth modifier is going to have a lot more work to do and it's going to be much slower to calculate the cloth simulation we can also put a maybe a solidify modifier as well Let's put the solidify modifier before the second subdivision. And this will give us a bit of thickness. And we can probably get away with just having it on the rim only. Just so we can, it appears we've got thickness on that rim there. And I'll probably give it one more subdivision as well. There we are. And of course, because these modifiers come after the cloth sim, they're not going to have too much of an impact on the speed at which the frame rate is. So let me play this back. You can see even on my old computer, GTX 1070, I'm still getting the full 24 frames per second. 
uh, on an i7 7700K. If it does go slow though, what you could do is select the monkey, go into the physics tab, under the cache section, you can choose to bake the entire frame range so that it's not calculating frames that it hasn't already calculated during playback. So you just bake it once, that'll be quite quick. And then you'll see all the different settings have become greyed out. We can't change those now. But it means it will never have to recalculate again because it's always going to read it from the cache. If you want to make it better, what you can also do is turn on self collision. So let's have a quick look at that. And we'll just get rid of the cache. So clear the cache, delete bake. And what we can do now, if we go down to the collision section, is turn on the self collision. And that will just add a bit more realism by ensuring that the parts of the mesh can't intersect and go through each other. Instead, they'll bounce off each other and behave more like a, a proper piece of cloth. So we play this back. It's going to be much slower now, but you'll see when the faces uh, come into contact with each other, they no longer pass through each other. They rebound off of each other. Now we can change the behavior uh, by turning down things like the friction. So I'll turn the friction down to zero. And that will just make the faces slide around more easily across one another rather than getting stuck in one particular place when they've made contact. And again, we'll go back into the physics area, into the cache section, and we'll just choose to bake it. And you can see as well, because we've got the self collisions turned on, the eyeballs are no longer dropping through the uh, monkey in, uh, out of sight. You can see they're actually inside the monkey now bouncing around. And that's it, so I hope it's useful and I'll catch you in the next one.